Warning. This is a safe place for intellectual conversation regarding the Fizz Feed. Negativity may be deliciously repackaged and promptly returned to sender. Only good vibes allowed beyond this point. Let's get you some breaking news tonight and an investigation underway after a bizarre discovery. Someone found a human leg tonight at Watermont Park in Cudahy. The Milwaukee County Sheriff's Office is now investigating. They tell us that discovery happened around 5.30 tonight. Let's get right to 12 News' Erica Finke at the scene live for us this evening. Erica. Right, we're, right, we're live right now near Sheridan and Pulaski, where actually the last of the police cruisers have left since after 5.30 this afternoon when they received the call. But actually right over my shoulder is the access to Lake Michigan, which was blocked up until now. So here's what we know. The Milwaukee County Sheriff's Office says the leg was found in or near the water today at the park. It was east of the golf course by the pump house. A 12 News camera captured detectives looking near the shore in that area. Cudahy police initially responded, but tonight we know the sheriff's office is leading this investigation. Now back out here live tonight, we do not know where that leg came from. We had also seen the medical examiner here tonight, but whenever we get updates, it'll be on the 12 News app. Erica Finke reporting live tonight in Cudahy. A mystery along Lake Michigan. It's been one day since someone found a severed human leg at a Cudahy Park. As Aaron Maven explains, investigators want to know who it belonged to and what happened to it. Very shocking. This is such a quiet area. The gruesome discovery happened Tuesday. Someone found a severed human leg at Warnemont Park in Cudahy. You respond to the Warnemont Golf Course parking lot. Two males who stated they found a leg in the bra by the water. The sheriff's office says a person visiting the park discovered the leg in or near the water east of the golf course, right by the pump house. News of a human leg turning up here stunned dog walkers like John Hammer. It's just amazing to me that in a quiet area like this, something so heinous could happen. People who visit this park say they want to know where the leg came from and what exactly happened to the person it used to belong to. Why is the first question. Why, why here? After the leg was found, investigators looked for any evidence to help solve the mystery. We come here often and we regard it as a safe and place for the family to go walking and to hear about something like this is quite a quite a shock. Eric Ruckstatter says it won't keep him away, but he is staying aware of his surroundings. As long as, uh, you know, there's other people around like there is frequently, I mean, I'll feel safe. The sheriff's office calls this a death investigation, but deputies have not shared the process of how they'll identify who the leg came from or what went horribly wrong. How is this gonna impact the community at large? What are people gonna think? Who is this gonna keep away from here? In Cudahy, Aaron Maven, Fox 6 News. You can still see footprints all over this remote beach that's along Lake Michigan here in South Milwaukee. Neighbors tell me investigators were out here for much of the morning on Thursday. This home security camera footage shows investigators by the Milwaukee County Medical Examiner's van just up the hill from the beach. It's yards from my front door. Someone walking the remote beach around 7.30 this morning found a torso and an arm just yards away from Angela Buchanan's home. I'm definitely on edge now. The Milwaukee County Sheriff's Office believes the body parts belong to 19-year-old Shade Robinson. This is not something that anybody should have to go through, especially such a young girl. Angela was just down on the beach the evening before walking her dog. It just kind of makes me like scared now to kind of want to come down here with my dog, uh, you know, and, and do what we do every day because now it's Am I, gonna, am I gonna come down here and be the next one that's gonna find more body parts? Angela's neighbor, Gail, who didn't want to be on camera, says the beach is her escape. Is this disturbing to you? Honey, the whole world is disturbing right now. With tears in her eyes, Gail can't help but think about Sade's life that was cut too short. Oh my God, my heart breaks for her. If I would have found those, I, I would have been devastated. I can't even imagine what their family feels like. My heart's gonna cry for this, I can't. It's really, it's gotta stop. Something that won't stop is the search for Sade's body. Gail joined the family and friends along the shoreline Thursday afternoon. Investigators say they were taking a sonar boat 
out on the lake to look for more body parts on Friday. In South Milwaukee, Megan Lee, TMJ4 News. And that person found the torso and arm as they walked along Lake Michigan. The beach is just beyond this wooded area here. Neighbors shocked by the discovery in their own backyard. Lake Michigan waves in South Milwaukee turned up a disturbing discovery Thursday morning. Hectic, scary, kind of like shocking. Someone on their morning walk along the shore found a torso and an arm. Investigators believe the remains belong to 19-year-old Sade Robinson. Topanga Brogdon didn't want to go on camera, but she watched investigators from her backyard. They uh, came back up carrying the body bag. Angela Buchanan captured a photo of the crime scene. Police tape blocking the path down to the lake just after sunrise. It hits really hard because you don't it's just the brutality of it. Prosecutors say 33-year-old Maxwell Anderson killed Robinson after their first date on April 1st and mutilated her body. Unfortunately, I kind of right away had just this bad gut feeling just because I know this is not far at all from Warnemont Park where um, her leg was found. On April 2nd, someone found Robinson's leg near the water at Warnemont Park. Police later discovered human remains believed to be Robinson's on Milwaukee's north side, near 30th and Galena, along with her torched car. It's scary that, you know, you go on a first date with somebody and this is what you have to worry about. Robinson's family and friends came to the beach after learning about today's discovery. They didn't want to go on camera, but tell me they want to be able to have a proper funeral and burial for Robinson. These discoveries incredibly disturbing. Kendall, the Milwaukee County Sheriff's Office is still asking for tips. They're asking anyone with information to call them or to remain anonymous, call Crime Stoppers. Tomorrow, the Sheriff's Office says they're sending a sonar detection boat into Lake Michigan to look for more remains and evidence. Looking to learn more information about the disappearance of Sade Robinson and the possible connection to those human remains that have been found across the area over the last 10 days. Since Sade went missing, her family has been asking for donations for search efforts. Today, the GoFundMe says the money will be used for memorial expenses. So far, law enforcement has not confirmed Sade's death or connected her to the body parts that have been found or the person of custody. In custody in all this, Maxwell Anderson. Our Ray walks us through a timeline since Sade went missing. The story begins on Monday, April 1st. That's when 19-year-old Sade Robinson was first reported missing. On Tuesday, April 2nd, family says Sade's car was found torched here near 30th and Lisbon on Milwaukee's north side that same day. Just really brings into question what is wrong with people. I'm, it's it's heinous. A severed leg was found here at Warnemont Park in Cudahy, 11 miles from Sade's burned car. On Thursday, April 4th, our crews found Milwaukee County Sheriff's deputies searching a home on Oklahoma and 39th Street. That same day, Maxwell Anderson was taken into custody and identified as a person of interest in relation to the severed leg found in Cudahy. Now, this is where things take another disturbing turn. Friday, April 5th, sheriff's deputies found more body parts near where I'm standing at 30th and Lisbon, the same location where Sade's car was found set on fire. On Saturday, April 6th, Sade's family searched that same area and found her blanket. It's devastating because um, when we came to look for her, we weren't coming looking for body parts. We were just coming to look for her. Milwaukee police came out to search again and found even more human remains. Now it's Sunday, April 7th. Sade's family comes back to search and finds human remains yet again. I want answers because I, I need to know why somebody would want to do this to her. Let's go back to Maxwell Anderson for a second. While he has not been charged with a crime, we're naming him because of the nature of the allegations. On Tuesday, April 9th, Anderson went before a Milwaukee County judge where prosecutors asked for an extension to keep him behind bars. That extension was granted. The same night, family and friends of Sade's went back to Warnemont Park in Cudahy to search the area. She looked out for my baby. The least I could do is look out for her, her mama's baby. They say they found what they believe to be body parts, but that the sheriff's office needed to investigate further. It's now Thursday, April 11th, 11 days since Sade went missing. 
The sheriff's office is leading the investigation, but our phone calls and emails have gone unanswered. The DA's office confirmed charges are likely not coming to date. Sade's mom tells me that once charges are filed, she plans to sit down and talk with us. I'm Jenna Ray for TMJ4 News. Law enforcement back out this afternoon, searching along the Lake Michigan shoreline at Warnemont Park in Cudahy. Again, this is the place where that severed leg was found and all this began. It's also where the family of missing Milwaukee woman Shadi Robinson has been searching for clues. No word on what this group of officers were looking for. Yeah, we may have to uh, get a moving pump. There'll be a period at the end where you can ask a question. All right, we ready? All right, great. Morning, folks. I'm James Burnett, spokesman for the Milwaukee County Sheriff's Office. Mm -hmm. I am here with uh, Milwaukee County Sheriff Danita Ball, Milwaukee Police Chief Jeffrey Norman. A little bit of housekeeping really quickly. You probably know this. If you don't, you probably should not be here. Sheriff Ball, B-E-N-I-T-A-B-A-L-L. -L. Chief Norman, J-E-F-F-R-E-Y-N-O-R-M-A-N. -E we good? Great. Okay, so we're here for a briefing on the uh, an ongoing investigation for human remains that were discovered early last week. And uh, again, all the subsequent information that has come after that. I have to tell you, this briefing may be brief because there are a number of questions we may not be able to answer. That said, uh, Sheriff Ball, Chief Norman will give you what they can. And uh, on that, I will uh, hand it off to the Sheriff. Thank you. Good morning. Thank you for being here. Today, we're going to give a brief update regarding the severed leg that was found and some of the human remains that have been found throughout Milwaukee County. As you know, on April the 2nd, at approximately 5.29 p.m. Milwaukee County 911 dispatch received a call from Cudahy Police Department regarding a severed leg at Warnermont Park. It was near the golf course and the uh, pumping um, house. And so uh, the leg was amputated from the, uh, around the hip down. And uh, as a result, the um, the leg appeared to be that of an African-American female. Subsequently, a Milwaukee police officer who was aware of our investigation raised the possibility that the leg may be related to a missing person investigation that they were conducting and that uh, missing person was Sade Robinson. So um, on Wednesday, April the 4th, our investigation led to a person of interest, Maxwell Stephen Anderson, who lives in the 3100 block of South 39th Street, where he was arrested after a traffic stop near the home. A search warrant was conducted. The severed leg has been preliminarily identified as belonging to Ms. Robinson. Our thoughts and prayers go out to the Robinson family, friends, and the Milwaukee community who have embraced this family. We are sorry for your loss. It's such a tra tragic incident. Our investigators have worked around the clock on this investigation. As a result of their diligence and with the help of our criminal justice partners, the district attorney's office issued charges today against Maxwell Stephen Anderson for first degree intentional homicide, mutilating a corpse, and arson of property other than building. He remains in custody. The Milwaukee County Sheriff's Office would like to thank all of our partners involved in this investigation, specifically the Milwaukee Police Department, the Cudahy Police Department, the Kenosha Police Department, the Madison Police Department K-9 Unit, Great Lakes Search and Rescue K-9 Unit, the FBI, the ATF, the Department of Justice's uh, Division of Criminal Investigation and their Crime Lab, the Medical Examiner's Office, the District Attorney's Office, the Milwaukee County Transit System, Wisconsin Southern Railroad, the United States Coast Guard, forensic anthropologist Gordon Karsten, and other partners who may have helped in this endeavor. Your help was very invaluable. Again, we extend our sincere condolences to the Robinson family as they navigate this difficult time and mourn the loss of Sade. I'm going to turn it over to Chief Norman, who's going to talk about other parts of the investigation. Thank you. Thank you, Sheriff Ball. Mm -hmm. First and foremost, on behalf of the Milwaukee Peace Department, our hearts and prayers go out to the family of Sade Robinson. This is a horrendous tragedy, and above all else, 
We cannot imagine the pain that you must be going through. Please know that you have our deepest thoughts and condolences. Details of some of the Market Police Department's involvement can be found in the criminal complaint that was filed by the district attorney this morning. What we can share at this time is this. On April 2nd, Market Police Department investigated an arson at the 2800 block of West Lisbon Avenue. Video surveillance recovered from the arson investigation led investigators to search the area of 3000 West Galena Street. On Friday, April 5th, investigators located human remains in the area. On Saturday, April 6th, MPD continued the search of, in the area and located additional human remains on the railroad tracks. Later in the evening on Saturday, April 6th, MPD returned to the area when Ms. Robinson's family located her blanket. At this time, detectives located additional human remains. The, the identification of human remains recovered by MPD are still pending. I repeat that. The additional human remains are still being looked at and the investigation is pending in regards to the identification of that. Please note, we continue to search for additional evidence that has not been located. Anyone with information is asked to contact the Police Department at 414-935-7360. Or to remain anonymous, contact Crime Stoppers at 414-224-TIPS or P3TIPS. We are grateful for the efforts of the Sheriff's Department, the District Attorney's Office, and other federal and local law enforcement partners for their tireless efforts to gather facts and evidence in this case. Please remember, this is an ongoing investigation, and as information becomes available, we will do so in sharing it. And we also ask, to please remember to respect the privacy of the family at this time and allow them to grieve. This time I'll turn it back over to Sheriff Ball. So if you have some questions that we can answer, um, you can ask them now. A preliminary investigation has shown that the leg is Ms. Robinson's, and yes, the the uh, human remains um, have not been identified yet. Are you looking into other missing women and reviewing those cases to possibly connect it to this case? This is an ongoing case, and we have looked at other. Um, um, parts of the investigation to see if there are any uh, others that could be linked uh, and so far we there hasn't been any evidence that there is any other um, victims there hasn't been anything that uh, is pointed to that right now We can't, it's still part of the ongoing uh, investigation, so we can't uh, comment on that. Do you know how she died? Can't comment on that. It's, it's my understanding that uh, they may have met at his uh, place of employment, uh, but uh, right now we can't confirm that. Mm -hmm. At this time, we don't believe that there are any other victims out there and that the person who uh, is responsible for this heinous crime has been arrested. Are you still searching for remains for Ms. Robinson? Yes, we are. Do you know where those remains could be? No. Have you, found a, or do you, have you recovered a murder weapon in this situation? Ongoing investigation. Well, so we have time, interest of time, two more questions. Has there been a motive established? Ongoing investigation. What did you find inside that home, specifically in the basement? Cannot really say that at this time. Is anyone else connected to the crime that there would be more charges? We we have no evidence there. There's anyone else that's related to this offense, but uh, you know we, as I said before, it is ongoing investigation. When is this news that we can as soon as we get information. Is he speaking with investigators, Anderson? It's my understanding that he has uh, retained the lawyer. No. All right, folks. Just like, could you describe the crime? I mean, you called it a heinous crime. Just how are your investigators doing having to tackle this right now? Well, just to know that someone has, uh, you know, been dismembered in a fashion like that, uh, you know, it's, um, you know, our investigators, they want to find justice for the victim. And so right now, that's what their focus is on. But, you know, any crimes like this, it's bound to, at some point in time, have an effect on those who are involved. Sure, thanks, Chief. Thank Thanks for your time. Um, no promises, but there could be an additional briefing at a later date, sooner rather than later. Uh, if you have any follow-up questions, I wish I could tell you to call Sergeant Cornejo over there, not me, but um, call me. So, 
Yeah, yeah, that would be. Um, in any case, you don't have to go home, but. He's a Milwaukee bartender now at the center of an investigation into a severed leg. 12 News Investigates is learning more about Maxwell Anderson, including what law enforcement sources tell us they found in his basement. Anderson has not been charged. At the same time, 19-year-old Shade Robinson has been missing for 10 days. Police say she was last seen April 1st with her burnt car later found near 30th and Lisbon. This past weekend, investigators discovered human remains near 31st and Galena over three consecutive days. Now, this is the second place a body part was found in Milwaukee County in a week. That severed leg was found in Warnemont Park in Cudahy on April 2nd. 12 News' Hannah Hilliard is live outside Anderson's home near 39th in Oklahoma. And Hannah, you've been looking into his past all day long. Yeah, Joyce and Patrick, and we have uncovered a lot, including Anderson's ties to Waukesha County and what sources are telling us investigators found inside this home exactly one week ago. This is the man behind bars, but not yet charged. In the interest of Maxwell Stephen Anderson. Appearing in court in connection to a case that's captivated Milwaukee. Who is Maxwell Anderson? We know he's a Southside resident whose house at 39th in Oklahoma was searched by investigators two days after someone found a severed leg on the Lake Michigan shore in Cudahy. 12 News has confirmed the 33-year-old man has ties to Waukesha County, attending Kettle Moraine, Catholic Memorial, and Pewaukee High Schools in the early 2000s. Anderson has a criminal record, a 2014 misdemeanor disorderly conduct conviction in Waukesha County after an incident with a family member in Delafield, and in 2015, a misdemeanor domestic violence case out of Door County. For the last few years, he's worked at several Milwaukee bars. He works full time. Including the rave from 2018 to 2020, most recently working at Victor's nightclub on the east side. A woman who claims she met Anderson there spoke to 12 News by phone, but asked not to be identified out of fear for her safety. She says he once invited her to his south side home. I remember there being something about a hole in the yard, um, and this was back in fall. I remember asking about it, and he was like, oh, I'm building a garden. In a view from News Chopper 12. All right, that looks like a hole there, actually. A gaping hole next to Anderson's house was visible earlier this week. Inside the home? And when I got in, it just kind of seemed like he was in the middle of a whole bunch of renovations, but kind of seems like the kind of guy that never would finish them. Thursday, 12 News learned from multiple law enforcement sources, Anderson had what is described as a sex dungeon in his basement. So I got a little bit of a tour, and he was like, do you want to see the basement? And I was like, no, I'm okay. He's like, it's creepy down there. And I was like, no, that's okay. Now, Hannah, Anderson hasn't been charged, but is still being held after almost a week in jail. Right, Joy. So the court did give prosecutors an additional 72 hours to either charge Anderson or release him. Those 72 hours run out tomorrow morning. We will, of course, be sure to stay on top of any developments and bring them to you as they happen on air and online. Hannah Hilliard live in Milwaukee. And as we have been reporting, that 72-hour hold on Maxwell Anderson expires tomorrow. We asked legal expert Craig Mastantuno about what could happen next. If he's released, that doesn't stop prosecutors and police for, from continuing to gather evidence uh, and potentially charge Mr. Anderson at a later date. In other words, tomorrow's not a dismissal or move forward date. It's a move forward with a complaint or release the suspect. Attend tomorrow, Maxwell Anderson, the man accused of killing and mutilating 19-year-old Shade Robinson, will appear before a judge once again. Our Bria Jones is here with a look ahead at Anderson's court appearance. Bria? Ted, Mary, this will be Maxwell Anderson's second appearance in court. Prosecutors saying his alleged fatal first date with Shawnee Robinson left her dead and dismembered. Tonight, as he sits in jail, police still watching his home as the community continues to pepper it with pink for Robinson. Windmill spin outside Maxwell Anderson's home. Constant spinning, mirroring the racing thoughts of Milwaukeeans, mourning the loss of Shade Robinson. Who would do that to somebody? Like, you know, nobody deserved that to happen to him. On April 1st, prosecutors say 33 year old Anderson and 19 year old Robinson met for their first date in Milwaukee. Robinson would later be reported critical missing. 
Over the next nearly three weeks, body parts and human remains were discovered across Milwaukee County. Maxwell is due back in court Monday. He's charged with first degree intentional homicide, mutilating a corpse and arson in Robinson's death. A day before the preliminary hearing, officers are posted outside and yellow crime scene tape still lines Anderson's home at 39th Street near Oklahoma Avenue, the home GPS technology last place Robinson. It's just a horrific story and it, it touched everybody. Sunday, Cameron Lacking and his family came to pay their respects after church, dropping off pink flowers and balloons. We all got baptized and um, just put it on our heart to come show some love. And now, as body parts continue to appear around the lakefront, many are bracing for the wills of justice to spin. Just praying for justice. I just wish he would just, you know, at least let, let the family know so they can have some closure with the rest of her body parts or... I did reach out to Anderson's attorney, Tony Cotton, for a comment today. He said, right now, we have no statement to make. Anderson's hearing is tomorrow afternoon. Mary? Bria, thank you. Ian Vance Curzan for the state. Good afternoon, Your Honor. Attorney Anthony Cotton with Maxwell Anderson. He's here in person. Good afternoon. Commissioner, to start, I filed an amended criminal complaint. The purpose of that amended criminal complaint was to essentially include a footnote um, regarding the blood recovered in the residence. The footnote is on page six, and it just indicates that the preliminary DNA analysis supports the conclusion that there is no support for inclusion of Robinson's DNA in the blood or swabs that have been tested. Um, and then some of those, her DNA has been excluded. But I just wanted to clarify that because it was brought up at the initial appearance. So that's why I included that. Otherwise, I think there was just a couple Scribner's errors that were corrected. The rest of the information remains unchanged and there's no additional charges. But I did have noticed that an amended complaint was filed any objections to probable cause? Not at this time, but. <clears throat> All right, I have read the criminal complaint. It does state probable cause. Wave reading? We do. All right. I'm showing you a document that's called preliminary hearing, questionnaire, and waiver. Is that your signature near the bottom of this page? Yes, Your Honor. Did you read this document? Or did your attorney read it to you, or both? Both, Your Honor. And did you understand it? Yes, Your Honor, sir. Did you understand that if you had a hearing, the state would have to produce witnesses and perhaps other evidence to show that you probably committed a felony? Yes, Your Honor. Did you also understand that by waiving that hearing, you are conceding that the state can establish probable cause and you will be ordered to stand trial. Yes, Your Honor. Anyone make any threats to get you to give up your hearing? No, Your Honor. Anyone make any promises to get you to give up your hearing? No, Your Honor. I will find that Mr. Anderson has made a knowing, intelligent, and voluntary waiver of his right to have a hearing in order to him bound over for trial. I'm also in receipt of a request for substitution of judge against the Honorable Gene Kyes, that is approved. I filed a signed and dated information today. I sent a copy of that document to defense counsel prior to the hearing. Acknowledge receipt, enter a not guilty plea subject to our uh, substitution request. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, let's take that. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good day, Your Honor. You too.
Tonight, we have new video that investigators say shows Sade Robinson's car driving away from Maxwell Anderson's home the night he killed her. Now, this new video comes after more body parts were found today along Lake Michigan. CBS 58's Adam Reif live in studio to break down the new information for us. Adam? New video from the night of the murder, new body parts discovered, and today we also heard from Maxwell Anderson's family for the very first time. This all comes as Sade Robinson's family plans a public vigil to honor her. Here's the new video. Prosecutors say that's Sade Robinson's car. The home security video shows the car heading south down the alley that leads away from Maxwell Anderson's garage. The video is timestamped at 1247 a.m. in the early morning hours of April 2nd, roughly three hours after Anderson and Robinson arrived at his home. In the video, the car turns west. From there, investigators say Anderson went to Warnemont Park and locations in Milwaukee to dispose of her body parts. According to cell phone data and more surveillance video, they believe believe Anderson killed Robinson sometime between arriving at his house and leaving Warnemont Park. More body parts were found early Thursday morning when someone walking along a beach in South Milwaukee discovered Robinson's torso and arm had washed ashore. Angela Buchanan lives nearby. I mean, I can't imagine what Sade's family is going through. Nobody will ever be able to understand that. You can't ever relate to that. Um, but just knowing that this happened so close to home is such, such a hard, hard thing. The torso and arm were found several miles south of where Robinson's leg was first found on the beach near Warnemont Park. Memorial flowers were left at the gate Anderson crashed through the night of the murder. Sade's name had been spray painted in the sand by supporters. But more body parts are still missing. I do hope that they're able to find the rest of her remains just so that the family can have a proper burial for her and they can have some some closure. Also Thursday, Anderson's family broke its silence. Through his son's defense attorney, his father Stephen issued a statement on behalf of the family. It said in part, quote, I would like to express our deepest sympathy and heartfelt condolences to the family and loved ones of Sade Robinson. We are shocked and devastated by her senseless death. That statement did not mention Maxwell Anderson or the charges he faces. The sheriff's office says the search for evidence is ongoing. Even before the arm and torso were found today, they had contracted a sonar boat to search the lake. That boat will head out tomorrow. Also tomorrow evening, Robinson's family will hold a public vigil for Sade. It'll be at Kilbourne Reservoir Park starting at 6 p.m. Here in the studio, Adam Rive, CBS 58 News. First time we are hearing from the father of Sade Robinson. She's the 19-year-old who was killed and mutilated after going on a first date. Fox 6's Bria Jones joins us live now with a look at the exclusive interview. Bria? Mary, this is a pain that no parent wants to experience. Carlos Robinson lives in Florida, but his heart is right here in Milwaukee with his daughter Sade Robinson as the search for her remains continues. Looking for her head and, uh, and her arm. Holding back tears. With each breath, Carlos Robinson is uttering words no father wishes to speak. A parent to have to deal with this type of trauma and tragedy, it's um, inconceivable. It's almost like I wake up to live in a nightmare every day. He's living with the haunting image of his daughter, 19-year-old Sade Carlina Robinson's death. Authorities say she was killed and dismembered while on a first date with 33-year-old Maxwell Anderson. Do you know how Sade met Maxwell Anderson? No, I don't. I don't know for sure. He's definitely not my daughter's type. I don't. I don't know. I don't. I, I got so many questions. I can't answer. Robinson was last seen on April 1st. The next day, a severed leg was found in Warnemont Park in Cudahy. Her father says he was in disbelief when her mother called him in Florida. They came here to get my DNA to match up. I was hoping that it wasn't her, what they found. Sadly, it was Sade's leg. Her car was found torched, and in the coming weeks, more body parts would be discovered across Milwaukee County. What is it like every time they find a body part to, to get that notification? It's like I want to know everything, but then I don't know if I can handle it. It's, it's devastating. She was a, a beautiful, beautiful soul. A soul he's hoping the community can help lay to rest by seeking justice and finding the rest of her remains. She's out there and uh, I need to find her to be able to put her to rest properly.
Tonight, this memorial outside Sade's job at Pizza Shuttle continues to grow. Her father says that he plans to make his way to Milwaukee to search for himself soon. He's also encouraging people to continue to search for areas where other body parts are found and also along the lakeshore. He tells me that a memorial has been set for May 10th, which is Sade's birthday. For now reporting live in Milwaukee, Bria Jones. Fox 6 News. Yeah, I passed the memorial earlier. There's such reverence. What a tribute. All right, Bria, thank you. It's our big story. More than a month after she was found dead and dismembered, the search is still on for the rest of Sade Robinson's remains. Fox 6's Bria Jones spoke with Robinson's father tonight, who's looking for his daughter ahead of her memorial service. In each wave, Carlos Robinson gets a glimpse of hope. I was just hopeful that I'll find her. Her life flashes before me from an infant to, to now. The soothing sounds of Lake Michigan can't calm his yearning to find the remaining body parts of his daughter, Sade Robinson. I don't want to find her, but I know I have to find her. Um, so it's an internal conflict. Late Tuesday night, he arrived in Milwaukee from Florida. His first stop, Warnemont Park in Cudahy, where 19-year-old Robinson's severed leg was found the day after she disappeared in early April. How does it feel to be here today in Warnemont Park? I could feel her just, just, you know, since I've been here, retracing her steps. Authorities say Robinson was killed and mutilated while on a first date with 33-year-old Maxwell Anderson. He's now charged with homicide. Evil. This was definitely a demonic spirit to do this. Robinson's car was found torched and body parts were later found across Milwaukee County. Technology also leading detectives to Anderson's home. Did you go to Maxwell Anderson's home? No, they told me don't go there. Um, so I'm trying not to go there. Why, who said not to go there? The authority. Despite not having all of her remains, Shade Robinson's family is preparing to celebrate her life this Friday on what would have been her 20th birthday. She will always live forever within me, regardless. In Milwaukee County, Bria Jones, Fox 6 News. By the way, if you'd like to help the family, a group will be gathering at Warnemount Park near the pump house at 10 tomorrow morning to keep searching. Details for Robinson's memorial service can be found on our website, fox6now.com. By women for women, two businesses are coming together to hold free self-defense workshops. Our Sam Kramer is here in the studio. And Sam, this is all in a response to the death of Sade Robinson. Hi there, Mary. The details of Robinson's death are troubling. They're also a wake-up call for women around the area to consider what they would do if they were in a similar situation. Tonight, the instructor says she's just hoping these workshops can bring at least a little good from the bad. On Main Street in Menominee Falls. Up here, a lot of Girl Scouts. Melissa Mish says the pictures are proof. And if it's real self-defense, anybody should be able to use it. From Girl Scouts to grandmothers, Mish has helped them all. Teaching realistic self-defense like this at MK Protection Strategies. It's so important, especially for women, to have a plan in advance of finding themselves in a threatening situation. But oftentimes these lessons are a response to the worst. It's a terrible story. On April 1st, Milwaukee County prosecutors say Sade Robinson left her apartment for a first date, but the 19 year old never made it home. Prosecutors say the man she met killed her, started her car on fire, then hid parts of her body around Milwaukee County. Whenever things like this happen in the community, um, people think about their unique situation and think about how am I vulnerable? How do I need to gain some more information so that I can protect myself? So Mish is responding alongside Safe Self-Defense Milwaukee with free workshops. They'll be held May 1st, May 17th, and May 31st so that students can leave with a lesson worth learning. They come feeling kind of apprehensive. They don't know what to expect and they leave feeling much more confident that they have skills that they know that they can use.
The students will learn about situational awareness and violence prevention before practicing some of the skills that they will learn. The classes will also gather donations for Shadi Robinson's fundraiser. And if you're interested, we have all the sign up links in this story at fox6now.com. Mary? Such important information, Sam. Thank you. And the instructor did give us a few tips, especially for women, the things that they can use to protect themselves on a first date. First, plan ahead. Share your plans with a family member, maybe some friends, and have an action point where if they haven't heard from you what we should do, uh, they should go ahead and take action. They should call you, set up some kind of a plan. Carry pepper spray. Also have a personal alarm, maybe something that you can attach to, say your keychain. And always have your phone with you if you're able to do so. Also, as we just saw, practice self-defense skills. You saw kind of the, some of the moves there in the story. Uh, the instructor there said, aim for the eyes, the throat, ears, all pressure points. She calls this a perishable skill. If you need to keep refreshing it or uh, freshening up to maintain it, make sure that you stay on that because, again, you can lose, you know, lose some of those skills in a couple months. So, so important. And they're going to go over all that in the class. That's free. Yeah, so exactly. Click on that story at fox6now.com. Got all the details for you. Please be conversations.